Hi, I'm Jim McCann, founder of 1-800-Flowers. We created this podcast to share the wonderful people we get to interact with, we get to meet, we get to know, and most importantly, get to learn from. So I invite you to join us on this journey here on the Celebrations Chatter podcast. Dave, uh, Dave Kirpin. Dave uh, is here with us today. Dave's a friend. Uh, it's easy for me to keep track of the number of years because I just asked him how long is he married. So it's 17 years we've known each other and been friends. Uh, Dave, uh, what I love about you, there's so many things on that list, but it's your enthusiasm, your curiosity, you, uh, your entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, you're just like the whirling dervish of ideas and making things happen. Obviously a prolific author. We have a bunch of your books here. Uh, likeable business. Like, you started with likeable uh, social media. Likeable yep, this, social this media. This one right here. Yep. Uh, a great book. Uh, really, uh, it, it seems like when you get curious about something, the way you learn about it is you're, you plan to write a book about it. And, and that's a good way to, good way to learn. Uh, certainly, we've seen lots of social experiments which, uh, which make that point uh, uh, manifestly. What was next for you after likeable social media? Next, we did likable business, right? So likable social media was all about the principles of great social media. And I wrote about listening and authenticity and transparency. And as I was doing the speaker circuit about all these great principles of social media, it, it, the thought occurred to me, wow, these aren't necessarily just great principles of social media. They're also great principles of business right? Yeah. in general. So we, we, I took the concepts from uh, the first book and really applied them to a, a greater uh, scale with, with, with just doing business in general. And I'm, I'm prouder of the likable business book. I was just joking with you earlier. It has sold far poor. It is, it has been reviewed much better, but it's sold much worse because apparently, uh, uh it's a bad cover and everyone judged the book by its cover. So, <laughs> oh, well, but, um, but no, I, it was, uh, I had a great time, uh, uh writing that one and, and talking to some CEOs about, you know, how they apply the principles of listening and, and authenticity and transparency. Storytelling is one of the principles as well, which obviously you're, you're a fantastic storyteller. But I think uh, one of the, uh, insights there is uh, all the great interviews you did. So your your personality, your curiosity, your thirst for knowledge, getting in to talk to all, all those folks helped you to learn the subject matter, help you to apply the things you think you knew, refine your message, and the product was uh, a terrific book. And then uh, something out of character, or at least out of character with the first two books, was your next book, Normal. Yeah, so my, my, my daughters, uh, I, I have two daughters, uh, that are uh, in their uh, teenage years now. And they, they both said to me after the first two books, uh, both of which were sort of business books, of course. And you didn't come find them, come home, find them on a couch reading your books? No, no, sadly they did Oh, actually, my oldest daughter read a little bit of one of them uh, as she was applying for college, so she could say she did. But um, no, they said, Dad, when are you going to write a book that we can read? And I said, oh, okay, challenge accepted. And uh, it was very, very different uh, writing a, uh, a fiction book for, for, for kids. But uh, it was a good experience as well. And I, I dove into, it's about four characters growing up in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, one of whom is a chubby Jewish boy named David that's growing up in Brooklyn. So there's maybe a little bit of, fi <laughs> of nonfiction still in, 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 in the fiction. Um, but uh, I had a great time with that one. And then The Art of People is my most recent one, uh, back, to, back to business, um, talking about people skills. And uh, again, sort of applying these principles of, of listening and asking good questions and uh, telling stories and being authentic to not only social media, not only business, but all, all relationships. Um, and then my next one was next year, Jim, what we're doing a book called Get Over Yourself, which is all about delegation mm -hmm. for leaders and how to, and how to delegate. So uh, as, uh, as I, as I asked you just, uh, just a, a little while ago, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, Again, I'm trying to learn about uh, great ways to delegate in leadership because, you know, you, you could have all the ideas in the world. If you, if you can't build a team that you can delegate to, it won't, won't work. Ideas are one thing. Getting them executed, getting them done is a whole other thing. Yep. And that's what your next book's about, huh? Yep. yep. David, uh, one of the things that you've, a hallmark of yours is that uh, when you think of something, you think it's going to be new and impactful, you jump in with both feet. And we know you did that early on with social media, Facebook, I think, being among the first of those medias that really caught your attention. You said, wait a minute, I come from a world, you were in the, the radio business, uh, and uh, which was a push kind of content media, obviously. But you were on the promotional side of that. And then you said, wait a minute, this new social media tool 
particularly Facebook, is going to change everything. How did you, career-wise, what did you do next to, to make sure that you were there early? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you the story about how, how we fell into social first. We, we were doing, uh, early on in our business, marketing, um, word-of-mouth marketing. So big events like baseball stadium events and shopping mall events. I worked out here in Long Island. At the, I did a, an event. I did some work with the Green Acres Mall. Did some uh, work with the mall in Queens. And I had an intern at the time who was a senior in college. And she said, you know, um, Facebook just opened up beyond uh, college students. I think you should join. I said, okay, set up a profile for me. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll join. So I joined Facebook uh, through my intern. And um, maybe three months later, I was doing a program for Verizon uh, where we were trying to um, uh, recruit people to, to have house parties that had the Verizon Fios service. And the idea was that they would share uh, with all their neighbors there's, there's this great TV service. We would, we would cater the party and, and uh, everyone would be excited about Verizon Fios and would sign up for Verizon Fios. But we were having, it was the beginning of Verizon, uh, Verizon's uh, uh, delving into TV, and we were having a hard time recruiting people, which is weird because you'd think recruiting people to ho host a free party would be, would, be, would be easy. So I said, you know, just for fun, I'll, I'll post on Facebook and see if I can find people that have Verizon and want to have a free party on Facebook. Well, Jim, within 24 hours, I had hundreds and hundreds of applications no of people that wanted these parties. and. That was the moment I knew. Uh -huh. Wow, this is <laughs> this is going to be very very big, and uh, and and we pivoted very very quickly. Um, I I love and so um, your career for the next sixteen years then has been about helping other people to discover the power of social media in their in projecting their businesses in their social lives in their business lives, and but now you think there's something that's as big if not bigger than your aha moment about the impact of so power of social media, and that is? And that's GPT. Uh, uh, it's it's un unbelievable uh, how quickly ChatGPT got to 100 million users and how, it's funny because AI has been around for a while, quite a while now, but until it hits a certain critical mass of usefulness, it, it almost doesn't matter, right? So before Facebook, there was... MySpace, sure. it was Friendster, there were other social networks, but it was Facebook that really built the product that changed everything. So it, you don't have to be first all the time. You referenced it in a conversation we had earlier, uh, Netscape, and Netscape was the first browser right. that was available to the public, uh, but it's, uh, it's not something we talk about anymore. So Facebook wasn't the first social media but they caught something different. They caught something different, and they and and and, and they and they rode the wave, obviously, um, and really changed the way that we interact with each other, and certainly the way that we do business. And so, similarly, um, GPT, uh, uh, generative pre pre trained transformers, or very very large language models, essentially artificial intelligence that's trained to uh, understand and be able be able to respond dynamically to uh, instructions, to prompts, is, is going to change. It's going to change everything again. And I, I believe it's, it's bigger. I definitely think it's bigger than social media. I would put it right up there with the Industrial Revolution and the Internet. So the Industrial Revolution completely changed the way we, we, we work and live. Absolutely. Internet completely changed the way we work and live. I think that GPT, not necessarily chat GPT, which has a good head start, but yep. again, there's Netscape. But, um, but the, all the tech players will, will have their own products and many other companies will build their own you know, tools using, using the, the, the technology. And this underlying technology of the sort of next generation of AI known as GPT is going to change everything because all of a sudden, I, I did that demo for you earlier today, just, and everything changes week after week. So depending on when this podcast runs, this is going to sound archaic, <laughs> but the fact that right it, it, now- That's tomorrow. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but right now, today, you can use ChatGPT to build a grocery list and refine the grocery list based on making sure you have healthy items in your grocery list. And then with one button, fill up a shopping cart in, in, in Instacart and then order your groceries to be delivered that day to your house, a week's worth of groceries. That's, that's mind blowing to yep. me. I can, I can say, and that know, starts before that with a recipe. It starts with, it starts with a recipe. I can say, 
I want to take my friend Jim out to lunch in uh, uh, Carl Place, Long Island. Do you have uh, five recommendations? Okay, great. Oh, actually, he, he likes Italian food. Give me Italian food. Okay, great. Make a reservation. Open up my open table plug-in and make a reservation for two at lunch next Tuesday. I mean... And that's all voice interactive. That's all voice. That's all voice. So we just... that All of that stuff was science fiction, <laughs> and now it's not. Mm-hmm. And so the, 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 the impact on... And, and all businesses and, let me see and the all menu. interactions. Right, right. And right, let me see the menu and uh, here's what I'm thinking about. Um, I, 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 tell, me, tell me if they have something on the menu that's, uh, that's kosher and, and, yeah. and, and, and that's, uh, that's lower than 500 calories. You know, mm-hmm. like the fact that all information, oh, Google, Google and web browsers figured out how to store information. But what GPT does is take it a level up in terms of making it actionable yes. immediately. And that's the difference. And in right? ways that couldn't have been done at all in a pre-GPT world. That's right. So uh, we talked about you being a great entrepreneur. We talk about you being early to things. And you get off on being early to things by helping other people to do the things you're discovering. Yeah. I, I know during COVID you created a, a, a small business uh, that has great utility, and that is we all had people in our lives, friends, family members who were passing away, and we were unable to hold services uh, for safety and, and fear reasons, uh, and you created a little business to help that. Yeah, I lost my mom right at the beginning of the pandemic, and it was um, obviously very sad and and uh, to lose my mom, but it was also really overwhelming to not be able to connect with all my family members, and so uh, being a fairly early adapter. I was one of the few people that was actually using Zoom far before the pandemic. And so I said, we'll have a Zoom a ceremony and uh, we'll, we'll connect everyone that way. Um, and uh, it sort of seems normal now because so many people went through it and now do virtual. But back then it was it was different. It was revolutionary. It was different. And so, you know, you right were changing th- cultural norms. You were you were there again with that service first mentality. Hey, I went through this. How could I? How could I have done this better? How could other? And if I'm going through this, there are other people experiencing this too. So you built a business around it. Now you built a half a dozen or so businesses and and sold uh, several of those. And uh, the other business that you have that I know of is a business called Apprentice. Again, helping people using technology and service to help people. Tell us a little bit about Apprentice. Yeah. So uh, all my businesses, to your point earlier, come out of my own my own problems, yep. right? So. And, and it's funny because uh, my my partner on the Remembering Live, the virtual memorial service business, was an, was my apprentice at the time. So one of the things that's so exciting for me is working with young people and helping them not only grow in their careers but to actually become entrepreneurs themselves, and build real things. He built a he built an eight hundred thousand dollar business at age twenty one. Yeah. Thanks to me. I mean, you know, it wasn't a huge huge business. The the pandemic ended. Which is great, <laughs> but um, but but that was really that was a proud moment for me. So Apprentice came out of the fact that as I was building my first business and couldn't afford full time employees, uh, we had a lot of college students working for us, and I would I would um, hire them while they were in school, and then um, they were they were smart and innovative, and they knew certainly they knew social media better than than than, than my generation did, um, and then many of them came to work for me full time after they graduated because I had already had the opportunity to mold them. So one such young man, he had worked for me for two years. Uh, he was a senior at Hamilton College, uh, Rob, Rob Burke. And he, and he turns to me and he says, you know, Dave, I, I got to tell you, I've learned more from you than I learned from four years in college. And I know I've helped you out a lot. And, and he had. And when going to college, you give them the checks. <laughs> Working for you, you get the check. Right, that's right. That's right. He was getting paid to, to, to learn. And honestly, he was doing great work for me, Jim. He helped me co-author one of these books. His, his name is probably on there. And he, he helped me execute a million dollar a, a, a client for a real estate uh, uh, initiative. And um, so he said, you know, I think there's a business model in you having college students working for you or for other entrepreneurs. And I said, yeah, you know what? You're right. And, uh, and six weeks later, Apprentice was born. And, um, and uh, my, I tipped my cap to him because, again, at the age of like 21, he negotiated a, uh, a co-CEO and 50-50 a split on the business. More power to him. And, and, uh, and he's off to the races now. I've uh, moved into a chairman role, and he, he's running the company, and it's grown quite a bit, um, matching college students with uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners. And, and actually now, of course, um, 
with GPT, we see massive, massive opportunity for those college students who have already grown up with GPT. It's crazy, Jim, mm -hmm. but um, th this is another topic altogether, but kids are using GPT uh, to uh, do all of their homework now yep. <laughs> in, in uh, high school and college. Um, but uh, but these, um, these young people, these apprentices can now use GPT to manage all sorts of tasks for uh, our small business and entrepreneurial clients, which is, which is really neat. Which brings us to what's next. So uh, we've talked about the fact, Dave, that you discover something that you think is going to be big and influential and change the way we think, change the way we act, change the way we do business. And you mentioned that GPT is the, the next way for you and GPT being built on AI. So what did he decide to do? Yeah, so my, my, my mentor, um, a guy by the name of Thor Ernston, who was an early employee at Zynga and then uh, uh, built Frontierville, helped with Farmville, has, is a brilliant, brilliant technologist. Um, he did a quick demo for me a couple of weeks ago where he, he, he built something that takes anyone's name, inputs the name, and then you, GPT analyzes every public interview they've ever done, everything they've, they've ever posted publicly, and um, does a full personality assessment on them, and, um, and, and, and basically knows everything about them. So he, and I've done a lot of interviews, as you know. Uh, so uh, if you like me, I'm a, I'm a media magnet. If you don't like me, I'm a media whore. But regardless, <laughs> there's a lot out there. Well, I mean, they both start yeah. with media. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so he puts in my name, and it, and it spits out all this information about me. It knew, like all these personality assessments, even though we didn't tell it, the personality assessments, it knew the results. It just, it knew me better than anyone. This, this machine in 60 seconds. And I said, wow, this is, this is amazing. And I don't know exactly what we're going to build, um, but we're going to, uh, I'm going to go into business with you and we're going to help big companies figure out how to create more efficiencies, solve their own problems uh, using GPT. There's so many implications so many use cases around data and analytics marketing biz dev operations uh supply chain pricing i mean the, the the number of applications that you can feed massive amounts of data into and get usable uh um uh outputs back it's it's massive and it's really really exciting and so what we'll probably do is work with a whole bunch of big companies because they have big problems and to be frank they have Big budgets. Big budgets, <laughs> right? right? Um, but then through that, through that work, um, the, the goal is to figure out the, the most applicable use cases to sort of mankind and, and hopefully build some really cool uh, tools that are applicable way beyond uh, uh, just uh, the, the, the individual so businesses. So Thor was, had, uh, was available because he had just sold the business. That's right. And uh, you two have been friends and had a good uh, long-term relationship and so you say he, he knocks your socks off with this demo. Uh, he also built another tool that he demonstrated at a TED conference. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so he's at, he's at TED, and um, obviously it's one of the most prestigious uh, 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 conferences in the world. And uh, how in the world do you get anyone's attention uh, while, while you're at TED with the mo some of the most brilliant thinkers on the planet? So, um, but he's a brilliant technologist himself, so he built a, an app uh, that... Um, that on top of GPT that takes any language and uh, uh, converts it from traditional male to traditional female. So, uh, so we, we, we men tend to be much more uh, short and to the point in our communications and traditional female, not saying everyone, but traditional females tend to be a little more expressive, you're, a little you're more doing emotive. doing it from a, a data analysis point of view. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So for instance, uh, he, he, he inputs uh, uh, for his wife, Clea, um, Hey, hon, see you later. And the uh, application that he built on top of GPT translates that to, hey, hon, I miss you so much. Can't wait to see you later, XOXOXO. And uh, vice versa, right? Uh, somebody can uh, input in traditional female. Hey, hon, I love you so much. Been thinking about you. I can't wait to get together next Friday night. And it, uh, it inputs it to see you next Friday, <laughs> exclamation point. And, um, you know, it's that whole men are from uh, uh, Mars, winter men are from Venus or, or maybe it's the other way around. It's now a dictionary to do that intergalactical, uh, interplanetary, uh, rather, uh, 
Co- uh, conversion. That's right. And right from your cell phone, right? And in, in, in a moment's notice. That, that's the amazing thing about technology and this particular technology. As technology continues to grow, things just get easier and easier and more and more at your fingertips where, right, our phone has become this massive, massive computer that when you and I were growing up, we, we couldn't have dreamed that a little teeny uh, phone like that would be uh, just uh, capable of so much. It's the, uh, it's the remote control of our lives. We put our heart into everything we do. We are farmers, bakers, florists, and makers who grow and create with a passion. Made with love at every step of the way. Because at the end of the day, we know you're sending more than a gift. 1-800-Flowers, share with love. From a business point of view, we think about two things here at Flowers. One is, how, how can we deploy these tools to help our existing customers? How, how do we do it starting with things that we can do for them for free? And then how do we get more creative? We've written a lot about in the last three years, had experts and uh, done a lot of investigation and reporting on helping people uh, to have more and better relationships. And we're concerned about what a lot of people are now talking about, which is the loneliness epidemic. So I, I think uh, this uh, GPT capability can be so much of a help in that regard, and I see some warning lights, some amber-colored lights flashing, saying there could be some dangerous paths we might go down here. But the idea that we're pursuing is how do we use these tools to help our community members, customers of ours, our members of our community, to have more and better relationships in our life. And when we, you and I were chatting with Lisa and Thor, just a week or so ago, we started going off on all the different ways that we could uh, productize things we've been suggesting our community do at the beginning of the year uh, with the input from our friend Dr. George Everly at, uh, at the, the Bloomberg School of Public Health at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, uh, where he, he helped us map out suggestions at the beginning of the year, how you should plan your relationship development plan right alongside your physical plan, right alongside your diet plan, your learning plan, should also be your map of what relationships are important to you. How do you, in, what are the ones you want to invest in? You want to grow those relationships. You want to deepen those relationships. What relationships in your life have faded away that you might want to consider two or three of those to invest in to reinvigorate those relationships? And who are three, four, five, whatever it is, people that you don't have a relationship but you think you would like to, and then develop a scheme, a plan for how do you invest against all of those. And when you and Thor started going off on the different tools you could build to help people to manage that process, not just think about it, but give them an action plan and then tools along the way to make those engagements richer and better, it just got us all worked up. I think it's really, really exciting and a really... um I mean, this is going to sound corny, but a really beautiful initiative to help people build better relationships. Um, I, I, I actually agree with you that there are some challenges, and, 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 I, and I think, um, I think people, people can use the tools only so much, and they have to actually sort of want to invest in the relationships. And I think what the tools can help with a lot is the talking. But it's funny because what I write about... Um, one of the one of the uh, biggest uh, strains that goes across all of my books is the notion of listening better, and and how most of us humans, even those of us that think we're pretty good listeners, <laughs> and I'll put myself in that category, uh, uh, sometimes we're not actually listening; we're waiting to talk. Mm-hmm. And so, when we focus on really better listening really being present with the other person, not thinking about what you're going to say next, but really hearing them and mirroring and validating, that alone is a skill that changed, for me, changed everything in my relationships. Um, And I think for others, um, can make a huge difference. And that's a skill that GPT can actually not help with as much. You still need to be present and listen. I I think it can as a training aid. Right. I mean, if if, if you teach someone how to really listen, and they say, ask them a few questions after they listen to a dialogue. That could all be chat GPT yeah. or at least GPT 
enabled to show people how listening differently can really help them to understand the person better. And that, in fact, is an investment in that relationship. Actually, you're right. And uh, I should have said, because we're actually using a tool now to um, that, an AI-based tool that for our salespeople at, at Apprentice that records the conversation and then analyzes based on what percent of the conversation they were talking versus listening mm -hmm. and the words that they used and how well they got the words that the prospect was saying, yep. how well they actually listened. So you're right. You're right. You can use it for that, too. I'm, I'm a, a, a fan of the Covey family. Uh, Dr. Stephen Covey, the dad who I met many, many years ago, but he did an exercise at a conference I was at. I think it was in Las Vegas, but uh, uh, he has a son and a daughter who I'm friendly with now who are both uh, continuing their dad's research about relationship and learning. And you, you know that Stephen Covey, the dad, wrote uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And uh, his daughter now has gone off and taken that to the next level. And it's really, really good work. But the class that he taught in, uh, in, at the conference I attended, he took half the room, large room filled with a lot of people. And he said, people on the left side, I'm going to ask you, some of you at the end of this, I'm going to ask you to get up and tell what I just taught. And you feel free to take notes, but I'm going to pick out a dozen of you, and we're going to see how well you retain the knowledge. So Right-hand side of the room, just relax, listen, we learn, you'll learn, learn too, but this, this side of the room is really going to be challenged here. Well, fast forward. At the end, uh, the people on the left side of the room retained so much more wow. because they were challenged yep. to, to think, yep. to pay attention, to yep. take notes, and always be thinking about, okay, how do I learn this so that I can give it back? And that it just rings in my head all the time about – how you approach something, right. you're, you, you take advantage of every interaction with somebody to learn something. It could be something you think you're interested in or something you just discover in the conversation. So I think listening skills that you're talking about are essential uh, for our own personal development. When we chatted earlier on about when you first reached out, it was we had Mother's Day recently, and we introduced something here at Flowers called Momverse, which was we grabbed a, some... Uh, a GPT, chat GPT tools uh, sitting on an AI platform to help people express themselves. And it's free, and you can come on, tell. So I put it in for my wife. I put it in that she likes to garden. Uh, I like limericks, so I said, compose me a limerick, not a poem, not a song, or just a, a greeting message. Give me a limerick. And uh, I said she likes to garden. Uh, she loves her grandkids, uh, spending time with them, reading to them, playing with them. And she also likes to bake, particularly bake pies. I was knocked out how in seconds, not minutes, but in seconds, it sped back something that was terrific. And, you know, we've had tens of thousands, maybe more than tens of thousands now, since uh, we introduced that as a free tool. But it just showed me people, A, they want to do the new, new thing. Yep. And they want to be better at expressing themselves. And they just flock to this tool. And, of course, you and Thor call up and say, like what you're doing, but did you ever think you could do blank, which is what we're doing today times a gazillion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it's um, the possibilities are endless, and it's so funny. It's like every, every time I think um, of doing almost anything, I think now, I think, well, let me just run it through ChatGPT and see if I could do it better. And lo and behold, I could do it better. I, I've got, uh, I write for Inc.com. And so I started uh, testing my articles. Yeah. So, so, so that, 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 so that's have, an example. I have an article here so, from yeah. you called Seven Non-Obvious Business Use Cases for GPT That Will Change Your Game. Well, here's the best part, Jim. Guess who wrote that article? Guess who drafted that article? I mean, I, I, I edited it. But well, I, you gave the input. I, I, it did the hard churn, and I then you said, edited it. I said, write me. Seven non-obvious use cases for GPT. Yes. In the voice of Dave Kirpin. Get out. It knows everything I've ever written and published. Yeah. Isn't that crazy, Jim? And, and, and so... You know, when I read this, I heard your voice. I, yeah, that's the craziest thing. And I, and I, I did edit it, but not that much. Yep. It was really good. It was, it was maybe better than something I could have written myself. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but it was. But, but look what it does to a writer who has writer's block. Look what it does to uh, accelerate your thinking and take the, the things that a machine can do and allow you to do the things that only you can do.
That's so right. let's go through some of those. Uh, brainstorming. So brainstorming, so we often get stuck in brainstorming on the ideas that one or two people happen to have in the room. And if, you know, they're super creative, um, great. But if they're not, you know, you're sort of sitting around, same old, same old. You can give it parameters and say, think really, really outside the box. Think completely differently. Here's a prompt. Go for it. I want 100 possible different ideas. I don't care how bad they are. And, and you can get them. And then, and then the, 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 thing, the thing that most people miss, at least on the content side, is they, they'll, they'll put a prompt in. They won't get what they want. And then they'll say, oh, well, it's a machine. It doesn't know. But the thing is, it's only as good as, as, as the very first prompt it gets. So put in a prompt. Give me 100 ideas about uh, new products that we could sell at 1-800-Flowers.com and the family of brands uh, that we don't currently sell. Uh-huh. Okay, so it could read the website and suggest 100 products. Actually, we want products that are valued between 30 and $50 only. Okay, then it'll refine the list. Actually, we want products that we think uh, will will be will have uh, very low shipping costs because they weigh less than you know two right. pounds and so on and so forth. Uh, imagine the refinements. The, really it's the good. refinements that are just to me mind blowing and, and incomparable to a traditional session of a few people brainstorming. Exactly. So that gets it going, and then the refinements, and now the the brainstorming gets more effective as the refinements get more effective. That's Unbelievably exciting. Now, you're building a company around this whole idea, you and Thor, and uh, he's the great technologist. You're the great marketer, communicator. What a great and, I think, dramatic combination. What are you going to call this company? So it's called KIPP. Um, you know, I mean, I like to f- come up with names. So I was very fortunate with, with Likeable. We launched Likeable. Likeable based on the thumbs up. Yeah, we launched Likeable. Here, here, here's what happened, Jim. I, I uh, had a friend that worked at Facebook. And they, they, early on, they, they, they used to have fans. And they went from fans to likes. And uh, I knew they were about to switch to the like button. And I said, you know, we're thinking of renaming our company. My, my original company was called the K Buzz, which um, uh, I abandoned when um, a, a woman running for borough president in Queens uh, called me up and said, "I hope I get to hear you on the K Buzz." I said, "What do you mean?" She said, "Don't you work for a radio station, the K Buzz?" I was like, "Okay, this is the wrong <laughs> name learned. for a marketing firm, right?" <laughs> but but I we we changed it. Um, Jenna Labelle, who was working for us at the time, thought of likable. I got to give her props and and. Um, we changed it two weeks before they launched the like button. My, my Facebook friend said, you know, I think we're going to keep this one, but you know how often we change things around here, so don't, don't count on it. I counted on it, and likable was the perfect name, and um, we really took off from there. And then when we launched Apprentice, some folks said, but what about that, that show with that, you know, the, that the guy? guy? The orange guy. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? Um, it's a name that immediately people know what it is, and that that was really great. So we came up with KIP, um, or wow. I came up with KIP. KIP stands for Knowledge is Power. Yep. And it's also a name. And it's not .com. It's dot. And it's it's dot AI. So KIP dot AI. So the idea is that it, we I wanted to humanize um, humanize AI. So KIP is a name that you know. It also stands for Knowledge is Power. And to me, it's the ultimate expression of how do we access the power that is literally the entire world's knowledge um, at, at, at our fingertips? And, well, and, and so it's that's easy what to folks remember. can do now. I think it's a great name. Thank you. Continuing on with your, uh, your uh, things that a business could think about and deploy GPT on, uh, I, I was just at a board meeting out west, and it's an industry that I don't work in every day. I'm on the board of the company, but it's in the biology business. And all of a sudden, they start going on they can't help it they're using their acronyms and uh, and shortcuts and their own vocabulary i wish i had a gpt filter that was listening to this it could make that very complex idea simplified for someone who's a non-industry expert yep yep totally so taking taking language you can take uh, a public company board report you know of a uh, hundred pages and um, put it in and say summarize this uh, as if I'm an eighth grader or second grader or college student or business school student. Or you can say, summarize this in one page. You can say, summarize this in three sentences. Get the most important data from this, this massive, massive uh, report. Uh, 
you can say summarize this 700 page book in in three pages for me yep. right so the ability to world take, war Two, a hell of a fight and the allies won <laughs> <laughs> the ability to take um the ability to take massive amounts of text and massively otherwise complicated uh, 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 and unfamiliar jargon um and and turn it into um, readable, consumable, understandable, literally no matter who you are. I mean, I could, my, my son's in, my son's in second grade. He's eight years old. I could say, um, uh, t- tell me, uh, t- to kill a mockingbird, rewrite to kill a mockingbird, uh, for an eight year old <laughs> and boom, now I can take a mass, a, 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 an amazing, this is less of a business case, more of a parenting case, yep. right? But I can take the, one of the world's most famous, uh, beautiful novels and apply it for my eight-year-old son. Like, yep. uh, but, but yes, to your point, technical, technical uh, work, uh, financial reports, uh, scientific uh, uh, documents. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't read scientific uh, pa- pa- uh, medical papers. I, I wouldn't understand that anything, much anymore. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but if I, um, if I had uh, a, a tool that would, would uh, con- scan that literature, scan that entire literature so and tell me everything Google, I actually need said, to know. Okay. Went to the doctor. The doctor said this about my blood work. And now you're researching. Now you have a tool that can research all the journals and ask it to make conclusions, not just feed you up. That's right. Data. Go- Google, you could Google. Let's say I had high blood pressure, uh, which I don't. But let's say I had super high blood pressure. I could Google that and say, um, you know, what, what, what are the dangers? What are the, what are the, what are the, uh, what are the symptoms? What are the treatments? And I could get, you know, hundreds of things that I would have to figure out what's good and what's not so good. And by the way, reading some of that medical literature is not easy for a non-clinician. That's right. Or I can use these tools that are now available to say, summarize the 10 most important, actionable, um, proven uh, um, treatments and and suggestions for dealing with, for lowering my blood pressure um, based on all the scientific journals and all of the current research. And now I have 10 things that I can do right now. Dave? You're doing nothing to lower my blood pressure right now because as we get into this and we think of all the implications, so just looking at your the, the, the article you wrote here, creating personalized content and experience, market research, competitive analysis, it's overwhelming, Dave. But thank God there's companies like Kip.ai which can help businesses develop, discover what their path could and should be. Yeah. Pick out a plan and have a trusted guide with great technology resources to say, we're going we're gonna to boil the ocean, but we're going to start here. Yeah, and look, I realize that um, it's very overwhelming. And um, I think sometimes the risk is um, jumping into something, not knowing, uh, not knowing what you're doing. And, you know, it's easy for an entrepreneur to jump out uh, and figure out the parachute on the way down. It's a lot harder for bigger companies. I get that. But I think the biggest risk... Um, is always no no action. The biggest risk is always uh, the, the 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 best de- the best decision is the right decision. The second best decision is the wrong decision, and the worst decision is no decision. And I think folks have to at least start to test things, try things, um, maybe fail a little bit with something that's 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 carefully uh, uh, measured and in order to test. Well, if you not if you're not making a hundred mistakes a week here, you're not even in a game. I, I, I really think so, and I think you know we, we saw uh, you know with the with the internet, we obviously saw the companies like uh, Blockbuster, and you know it's it's you know Jim Collins writes in Good to Great about you know seven of the greatest companies, and I think three of them are, are have perished so far. So the reality is. We might think we have a great company, a but great you're product, saying, et cetera, but if you don't move... Your client base is primarily the Fortune 1000 now because they have the wherewithal to engage with you. Uh, I, you'll continue to write and help other companies. But what do you, do you think... What's going to happen to that Fortune 1000? What's your prediction? Five years from now, what, how many of those have been disrupted because they didn't move fast enough? The pace is quickening, isn't it's, it? Dave? It's quick. It's 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 crazy. You know, Facebook uh, uh, came around so fast, and then TikTok beat them fastest to 100 million, and then ChatGPT crushed TikTok In with weeks. the speed to market weeks. And 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 it's it's definitely scary, even for somebody like me, because 
How do you if, sleep? If my, right, There's if so my, much to do. If my, if, my, <laughs> if my whole thing is, you know, staying on top of stuff for everyone else and everything changes literally every week. I mean, soon it'll be every day, but it's about building the nimble systems to react quickly and, and make changes. And those systems will have to be built at every company. And those that don't build the systems, it's not just about making the changes. It's about making the changes in the systems and the structures of your, of your business such that you can be flexible as things change. Because I don't know what's going to happen two weeks from now, Jim. How could, I, how could anyone? I don't know what's going to happen six weeks from now. But if we build uh, a team of people that know that the roadmap is going to change faster than it used to and we have our mission and our vision as our guiding light but we know that the strategies and tactics are going to change um, more frequently than they did before based on the pace of acceleration of technology then we can set up the systems for success and to, to answer your question maybe half of the fortune thousand is, wow. is, is here five years from now i think you're going to see because the thing is it's a lot easier for new companies to come up, build the systems, yep. than to change the systems, uh, as you know. And you were sensitive to that. We had a meeting here earlier where I got to introduce you and show you off, my friend, to a bunch of uh, uh, folks here at the company who are talented business leaders. And on the way out, you said that something that you're sensitive to is just because the, the, uh, the, the big shot, the founder or the CEO or the COO, wants to make these changes – it's not as easy as snapping your fingers. You have to build a community and you have to build that cultural uh, uh, backbone that you just talked about, which is uh, the clear vision of where you think you'd like to go, willingness to change that as you learn and adapt, uh, an attitude about celebrating mistakes because we will make plenty of them. But I'm here to tell you, uh, our friends in our community here, that I'm proud to be your friend. I'm proud now that you're, we're partnering, Flowers is partnering with you at kip.ai to help us uh, be the outside voice and bring some resources to the table to help us get there because I couldn't agree with you more. I think this is the biggest thing I've seen maybe ever, and it's going to change everything, and I have no idea how. I'm, every day I'm learning a little bit what it might look like, but we'll report to our community on a regular basis of what we're doing, our path, our discovery, our learning, and uh, we'll open the kimono a little bit about what we're doing together. And I think it's going to be exciting. I couldn't be happier than to be partnered with you. Well, thank you so much, Jim. And I, I am super excited to continue. Uh, you know, you, you, we go way back. And, um, you know, when we were amongst, when we were the, when we helped you become the, uh, really the first to fully embrace social the way you did in, in, in your industry, it was a pattern of you, of course, you, you, you did it with the, with the, from retail to the 1-800 number, and you did it from 1-800 to the internet, and you did it from the internet to mobile, and you did it from mobile to social, and now here you are doing it again, and everyone will get there. Well, not everyone will get there. Many will get there, but some will take a long time to get there, and some won't move fast enough to get there. Um, and so I'm really, you're, kudos to you for, for, for building the culture within the team that takes those risks and that pursues innovation in a true, sincere way. Uh, Dave Kirpin, founder, co-founder of Kip.ai, our trusted guide to the crazy new world. Thanks for sharing your ideas with us today, and let's go, uh, let's go make some history. Let's do it. Thanks for having me. It's my sister's birthday. Go to 100flowers.com. They have tons of great birthday gifts. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday. Wow. Yummy. I got to contain myself. 1-800-Flowers. Celebrate the people you love. Well, I hope you enjoyed what you heard, and I know I'll be sharing it forward. I hope you get to as well. Let's keep the conversation going. Follow me along on Twitter at Jim1800Flowers and on LinkedIn at Jim McCann. Hope to talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to Celebrations Chatter. You can join our community by reaching out at chatter at celebrations.com. And while you're at it, tell us what topics you'd like us to explore here on the Celebrations Chatter podcast. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to share it forward.